back, guys. Uh, here at the Cursed Trials, we're about to have Forsen battle off against Kibler. And as you may have quickly noticed already, <laughs> Kibler is not a druid player. Now, does he know something that we don't, or uh, does he just uh, refuse to, uh, you know, to go along the mainstream? <clears throat> will, will Kibler forever be a hipster? We'll have uh, to see. The answer to both those questions is probably yes. Uh, <laughs> I think Kibler knows that the dragon synergies are very strong, um, and I think the second thing is that I think Kibler also understands that he is the dragon master, so he has mm. to play dragons. In fact, uh, dragon I shaman. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying he will, but I'm saying do not be surprised if for some reason Kilber decided to put Blackwing Corruptors in his shaman deck. That's not just because. Oh, there's no way. <laughs> oh, come on. There's money on the. These players are playing for thirty thousand um, dollars. And now Kibler has gotten away with some very peculiar deck and card choices in the past. It certainly worked out very well for him in a few specific tournaments. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I am, uh, I'm gonna be a hater. I'm, I'm saying that no druid is is a pretty big disadvantage. Um, usually, when when one deck is is super popular, it's teched against and it doesn't do all that well. And that's why you know sometimes you see the hipster players doing actually the best, especially in the in the bigger sometimes the open tournaments. But I don't think that applies to this tournament. I think in this tournament. There's just like an endless supply of surprises that the good old standard and true, the decks that you think are broken, are probably the good ones. And uh, I think Druid certainly qualifies. Yeah, uh, I think you have a really good point. I think Druid's just too strong of an overall deck. So even if you want to curtail your strategy to kill Druid, it's still going to be one of those matchups that probably still you could lose. And then your entire strategy crumbles and you sacrifice your own win percentage to do that. We see people do that against Secret Paladin in tournaments. We see people do that. And let's go ahead and, and, and turn back the, the clock to like the Undertaker Hunters, the Miracle Rogues, uh, the Patron Warriors. You can, you can cater your entire strategy to it, but they still take a win sometimes, especially in Conquest. So uh, I'm in your camp. I think not bringing Druid is something that ultimately will hurt you more than help you. But uh, that isn't, it's not going to stop me from cheering from Kibler to go on with his dragon decks. And there we see it, the Brand Bronzebeard combo with the Druid stuff, or sorry, with the uh, dragon stuff. And Forsen, of course, he's going to be playing uh, the Aggro Shaman, but he's got some interesting twists to it with the Flame Juggler and Elemental Destruction, uh, Elemental, Unbound Elemental, excuse me. There's yeah. so many things with that, but you can go ahead and explain uh, this deck. Do you like these variations of the Aggro Shaman Crypt? Um, I have seen Flame Juggler, at least in, in, in current tournament play, be extremely successful. So I think Flame Juggler just is an okay inclusion. I think the game is very different. So I might actually disagree with Flame Juggler in this format. Because th there is no, hey, I'm just going to play 3 one ones this turn. There's, there's really none of that if you take away GVG and Max Ramus. So it's, it's going to have fewer situations where it's going to work. But I think it's still a pretty staple card. Um, Unbound Elemental is one of those cards that I feel doesn't work all that well in the meta right now. But with it slowed down... Yeah, I can I can see it working. It's just that Crackle was uh, you know something that you'd play in every single Shaman deck, and not having Crackle kind of makes it a little bit worse. And it already not seeing too much play. I think that's maybe a little bit weirder actually than than the Flame Juggler. Yeah, it's a really good point. Like part of what made Flame Juggler really strong was like you said all those little tokens they came out from Haunted Creeper, from Mustard for Battle, you know even. The periodic help the trades against Shredder, which usually has lower health, but it's just so sticky. Um, I, I agree a lot with what you're saying, but uh, you know it's also a little bit of damage, and it's more resilient to things onto the board because it's a two-three. So if you can get two hits in, it's almost worth uh, its weight already. And you know maybe Forsen has an opportunity to uh, to squeeze in enough damage for it to be to be worth it. And I do want to say that I think Forsen. Um, you know, for better or for worse, flies under the radar for how he navigates a lot of these decks like Hunter and uh, Zoo and even to the extent Aggro Shaman. Um, he has a very strong basic understanding of it because he's played it so much mm -hmm. and he's also had to multitask so much on his own personal stream because he gets distracted very often and yet he still can get a respectable win rate. So I, I anticipate Forsen to be very well versed in uh, how this deck is supposed to be played.
Alright, looks like Kibler went with the Taunt Minion rather than the Bran and Twilight Wealth. Uh, Twilight Wealth uh, coming into play with Bran already in play doubles the health buff. So it's a it's a one mana 2-5. You know, sign me up. I want some of those. Yeah, definitely. Um, being able to have those stats is just so crucial. The really cool thing, too, is being able to see how Kibler differentiates his build from Tice. Tice has cards like Farseer. And then mm. Kibler has cards like Chillmaw, and both of them deal with aggro in very different ways. One is very proactive onto the board uh, with just a taunt, but its effect is not always guaranteed. Uh, and then Farseer is pretty consistent in what it does very early in the game, but its effect isn't nearly as powerful. So uh, there's big, there's trade-offs here and there. I think ultimately I favor the Farseer a little bit more for its consistency, because ultimately the Chillmaw sometimes it's too late to play it. There's like, you're going to die anyways, or it doesn't even trigger at all. Ooh, it looks like Bran is going to uh, stay in play, which means that uh, Corruptor is going to do six at will. Dude, that's that's nasty. You can kill off this Unbound Elemental, uh, which is one of the crux to your board damage. I think this is a card that uh, Raynad really tried putting in initially to the Aggro Shaman. Uh, a lot of people didn't really like it because it was, like, slow, and you know, it just feels like you'd rather have, or, you know, more burn damage or just, like, faster minions like Knife Juggler, but, mm -hmm. um, I mean, looks like he's going to be able to hold on to at least one of them with some pretty good impact on the board. Mm, I wonder how this is going to work, though. The only clear that's available uh, costs him the Unbound Elemental, which I wouldn't be too happy with. Oh, I guess uh, Lightning Bolt on the 5-4. And the two one, and then that would push the unbound out of range. But it looks like uh, Force is more interested in doing some face damage here. Yeah, uh, but that's gonna mean Chill Mall has a pretty significant impact. Kibler willingly trades into the the minion, which exposes his Blackwing Corruptor to dying as well. Chill Mall does three damage as an AOE, but I think this is hedging your bets against. Uh, Earth Shock or some kind off the top. Oh man. Because of it, that Blackwing Corruptor not being able to kill off uh, another minion might be a big deal, but it looks like Forsen is pretty much officially out of steam here and just needs to top deck the answers. Um, Hungry Dragon! Oh no! The Pit that, Snake is yeah. Welcome to That has happened know it, a few Kim. times. It, it's happened a few. Like. Someone made like the prediction, and then it happened to me the same day. Um, oh god! But in my favor, I was happy. You know, it was. Oh, oh okay. It was like turn four. Uh, you know, play nothing, lose a card. It was, it was a good play by my opponent. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's basically kind of like those um, those cards from the, the that adventure boss in Black Rock Mountain, where the dragon kept giving you cards because you get to play them, but they mm -hmm. did so much damage to you and stuff. So, like, taking a look at the hand, though, Kibler chooses to play the Azure Drake just to draw and cycle. Uh, he ended up having Harvest Golem. I I'm anticipating he really wanted cards like uh, Sludge Belcher, uh, Unstable. No, I, I, I think by playing the Azure Drake first, he was looking for exactly Holy Smite. Because if otherwise, you'd play the Power Word Shield first to get more options. Because if you play the Azure Drake first, you only have one mana left. So, I think. I think that play is revealing that he has exactly Holy Smite, and that's exactly what he's looking for. Yeah, I was saying, from the Discover, uh, I was pointing out that you can discover cards within GVG and X Ramus. There's no mm -hmm. restriction on that. Absolutely. Uh, because there might be a scenario where you discover three cards from different expansions in there, and then you can't play that card at all. So it was just one of those things where, okay, if you have a Discover card with that or an Unstable Portal, you can play it. Yeah. That's not that's not going to be the case from my understanding in the actual standard format when once it is released though I believe uh, cards given through random card factories uh, will not cross the, the, the borders between the uh, between the formats yes uh, so I, I, at least that's the plan you can always change it depending on how things go force Jewel scare would be insane <laughs> yeah Jewel scare would be really good. Especially if, you know, even Museum Curator, there's some really good yeah. rattle minions that, that will leave the metagame once it's gone. Discover an x Ramus card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that might be a legitimate card that they <laughs> Stop giving them ideas, Crib. What? That sounds cool.
Discover a legendary minion from GBG. <laughs> J- discover Dr. Boom. Discover, and it's just three Dr. Booms. Or you can yep. pick Boom in the middle, left Boomba, right Boomba. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Kibler is just going to try to stay alive as best here, but it looks like uh, he's probably going to be able to do that. Um, at this stage, as the Shaman, you need very specific cards immediately. And uh, that, that is not one of those cards in question. Yeah, Feral Spirits is very good in the very beginning of the game with Tunnel Trog or even things like Totem Golem if you can get it out early enough because it protects the, those high attack minions uh, to just get repetitive damage. And now that the, the Feral Spirit is out here, it's just way too late. Oh, like, look how much Kibler wants to kill Aggro. He even has Defender of Argus in his Dragon Priest deck, so that way he can taunt up things like Twilight Whelps, uh, like you know, give him a lot of board presence. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, this is complete domination. Even damage though totem is, is much more important here. Even though you want to take out damage, you, you have to take out those spell damage totems. Now, Kibler's not playing around Elemental Destruction, but it doesn't matter. Fortune doesn't it, have it, yeah. and that's going to wrap up the game here. All right. Well, uh, well, Dragon Priest uh, gets a pretty nice win once again against Shaman. Uh, it, it does uh, yeah, seem I mean, that's, that's the deck it's good against, mm -hmm. uh, and that you'll expect to see a lot. Yeah, it, it is. It is right, but it it feels like against that specific matchup, it's just not any better than Warrior because Warrior can shut down the the, the minion creation with weapons a little bit earlier, and the warrior has more health bounce than the priest does. So it seems like the warrior would do better against shaman than the priest, but it actually hasn't really turned out to be that way. So maybe maybe a lot of the warrior games we've seen so far have just been uh, you know on the backside of some bad RNG. But we will see one once again here. Uh, see the merits of the dragon warrior once again. <laughs> And he gets another shot at redemption against the Druid deck. I mean, I, I kind of made a... I, I didn't feel like it was a bold prediction when I said we'll see a lot of Dragon Warrior, but um, we're seeing it like quite right. often. And yeah. Yeah, I kind of like it. But against this matchup, though, I'm not sure, Crip, because the more I see the Druid, the more it's like, it's still just as scary as it, as it was before. Yeah, it's not it's, more. It's even more scary, because you don't have Belcher or anything to worry about to get through complicated trade damage. Mm -hmm. Sylvanas, very good card. Um, the Druid has a really good next turn, but I feel you have a pretty bad two-turn play here. Like, you have the Druid of the Claw if you want, that's fine. Um, yeah, if he does swipe, he actually has a lot of flexibility. Even though it looks like a really bad play, it does keep him very open to a, a wide range of plays next turn. Yeah. So swipe is 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 probably the best two turn play that he has. That's right, because he keeps the coin. Therefore, he can respond with coin Sylvanas if it gets um, if he wants to be proactive onto the board. Also, drew the claw. He can keep the coin for a seven mana card if he draws it next turn. I, I mean, I like keeping the coin just for its versatility, like you said. All there right, looks like Sylvanas is going to come down. Um, I have no time for games. What is the answer here? I think you just have to ignore it, right? You just play. Oh, slam! No, that's the answer. Oh! You can, uh, you can slam your own minion, dunk it in there, and uh, throw a bash at it. And, and deal with Sylvanas right here, because I, I don't think Dragon Warriors commonly run silence cards. So, And even if you, you do, it's very hard to draw into it right now. Actually, uh, I think deal the, with now. I like it. I think the best play is to slam your own minion first because you could draw a weapon and you'd rather use a weapon than a bash. Oh, that's also a fantastic point when you put it that way. I like it a lot um, because the weapon will preemptively make it so that way you can use Blackwing Corruptor and Bash to start removing pieces. Maybe. Also, something I noticed that um, it's, it's also coming up on turn six. Your opponent ready to use coins. So you oh! Have to... <gasps> he plays the uh -oh. Drake. That would have been the <laughs> best card in the deck. Oh, no. Now we actually have to deal with, with the issues of the Sylvanas. Well, uh, I mean, you can still trade in and... Like, your, if your opponent develops no minions on board, 
like then then you can probably pick apart the the trades and whatnot. But like most likely you'll be able to trade into Sylvanas or trade into Sylvanas and not lose much. So that's why I can understand here. Look at this from Forsen stealing the Azure Drake to climb ahead on board. I like it. It's cute. And four health is like just annoying enough for your opponent to not be able to cleanly deal with it. There's no death spite, right? It's just Blackwing Corruptors, Bash, Fiery War Axe. Just well, annoying enough. Arcanite yeah. Reaper. I have to tell you, I have played I have played Arcanite Reaper in Control Warrior. And there's a special kind of envy you have towards Death Spite whenever you play an Arcanite Reaper. Every single yeah. time you play Arcanite Reaper is like, damn man, I just killed a minion with four health again. <laughs> Yeah, or yeah, but there is one thing to be said though. The nice thing about Arcanite Reaper is when you're like trying to kill off the um, the Emperor and you're just on that turn where you need the Death Rattle effect immediately and you don't have it. So sometimes, sometimes it ends up being okay. Yeah, the Arcanite Reaper is a card that's it's used every now and then, but it's mostly for the face type of warriors. It's it's the Arcanite Blast. That's what it is. Yeah, the Pyro Blast Arcanite yep. Reaper. I like it, man. Uh, I was actually playing a deck where I had like insane amount of weapons in arena drafts and just like I just kept going phase. I had like Gore Howl, three death spite, a curse blade, and an Orgo Warm All. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, taking a look at the uh, hand from Kibler here, you do have some ways to uh, start loading your up your own board, but um, if you're playing like a lot of these spells, when do you get a chance to play these minions, right? If you play Slam, at best you can develop one minion. So he has to kind of pick and choose how he wants to go about it. Also, another thing, too, is War Axe is very awkward. This is the biggest reason why Warrior sometimes struggles with Druid is because you can't get value off of things like the War Axe very often outside of things like Darnassus Aspirin. Well, the, the idea is, I think if you if you don't bash, you can bash next turn for four with Druid. But it looks like he just wants to clean up the board as fast as possible. I don't blame mm -hmm. him for that. But it's one of those things where you have to evaluate if he took the line where he was able to equip the weapon beforehand, he would have been able to develop a little bit stronger this turn while picking apart removal. But, um, yeah. I mean, at this point, you just have to roll with the punches you get. And again, four health minions! So annoying. <laughs> Every single time. Oh, man. This is, by the way... Two uh, Savage Combatants. So when you Hero Power, that's a five damage hit from the face. Maybe uh, every turn, which is kind of like a kind of like just mind blasting your opponent every turn or kill commanding. Mm -hmm. um, well, the most efficient tempo play would be to slam and then play the two three drops. Let's we'll see what he draws. He can still get like executes. <laughs> every just deck really wants to get pit snaked for his yep. YouTube channel. And well, then inevitably maybe no, 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 no. It's okay. it's gonna be that one time where uh, the only way he stays alive is by donating a zombie chow to his opponent, and then it's gonna happen exactly oh, at that oh, moment. That's so funny, man! <laughs> zombie chow to heal for five. Yep. Um, you know, force of nature actually clears the board if you mm -hmm. feel force nature hero power, but I don't know if that's the best play considering that you also can develop some minions here. Hmm. I wonder. Hmm. Depends on how what you prioritize. Plus, with cards like Mounted Raptor, I'm sure there's more sticky minions that you want to load think, onto the board. Yeah, I think Keeper, Mounted Raptor, and Hero Power also clears the board, and you just keep your force of nature. I like that a lot better. You have to be hmm. Keeper on the 3-5. And hero power on the three five, and then just the uh, the savage combatant kills the monkey. Uh, oh, it's the same thing either way. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, this play is also very good too. It's more mana efficient. I like it. More minions onto the board. I was just throwing out the first play that I really thought of, but uh, this is very clean too. And uh, maybe you go face here actually, because your minions aren't too vulnerable to the three five. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, Kibler's willing to play cards like Defender of Argus into his deck, so there is that small op I mean, you know that. But yeah, but in Warrior, that seems much less likely. Well, you think I he mean, has Argus freaks. in this one, too? I'm not saying I think he... I know or I think he does. I'm saying there is that remote possibility, mm -hmm. but yeah. I, I think uh, I, I like the face attack anyways. You have Force of Nature. Your hand's telling you to be slightly aggressive with the board, so... 
I agree on it. What can you draw if Kibler needs to draw here? I, I don't think he can, I can draw anything that he'd just rather play the Blackwing Corruptor and the Fiery War Axe. The one damage being such a nuisance to Kibler here. If he goes for the Blackwing Corruptor too, it's not like he can full clear because the Mounted Raptor is yeah. just sticky. You know what would be a good weapon right now? Death's Bite. <laughs> Ogre of War Maw. To hit no, that's for the GPG. Illegal! Oh, it's in GPG, you're right! Ah, oh, it's the Ogres. God. God. I'm just referencing other cards that was not Death's Bite, but you're absolutely right. How could I forget? Oh, it's eleven damage. Yeah, oh, sorry, two twelve. Off. Damage. Two off. Can you draw lethal with the Azure Drake? I don't believe so. Nah, doesn't look like it. You don't have enough mana to play Force of Nature right afterwards, and even if you drew Innovate, you wouldn't be able to do anything else, anyways. Yeah, and Savage Roar is the same amount of damage as a Force of Nature this turn. But swipe would be pretty awesome, I think, to control you could, a little bit of the You board. could consider like a bit of a hybrid play. Like uh, you just go face with all that junk and you what? clear out the 5 4 for the force of nature. But I don't know. I'm, I'm tempted to go all in at the same time. Yeah, I guess it's pretty low chance your opponent has like the Alex Straza to punish you. And even then, you still have an out with force of nature. So. Oh, sorry, with Savage Roar with the force of nature. I don't mind that. Yep. See what killer draws. Is it... Is it uh, zombie chow time? That is a pretty good card, though. That does help him clear a little bit, and it might end up uh, being the card that keeps him alive here. Well, it's, he's going to draw first with Azure Drake. Still can pick up Bash or something really useful for three mana. Shield block would be quite nice as well. Uh, oh, there's that one damage you needed last turn. So there is that cool Taskmaster. Oh man, talk about sticky minions for like that Force of Nature, Savage, or whether the other stuff to be really hard to remove. Yeah. And uh, is that it? Like Killer can't really. No, remove? he's he's on Zombie Chow. He's on Zombie Chow Patrol right now. Maybe. Well, he already killed off the Mounted Raptor, so he can't he actually do weapon. anything. Yeah. With a, with a weapon. Weapon killing Zombie Chow is nine. Oh no, it's, you're right! Even Zombie Chow doesn't save him. Even if it's Zombie no. Chow, it's exactly lethal. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, well, that's gonna wrap up the game here. So, Force and Strikes Back kills off the, uh, the Warrior deck, which once again is floundering a little bit, Crip. One and five. <laughs> eh, you know. You win one, you lose five. What's the big deal? <laughs> Uh, you know, you just you just have to win one. I mean, if, all, if the other two decks can bring you to the 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 victory point here, the game point, it just has to win one game. That's what the conquest is. In the meantime, Druid's still doing pretty good. Uh, I think outside of mirror matches, it definitely has a positive win rate. So absolutely, very much expected. You know, one class that we didn't really talk about here from Forsen is the Mage. And yeah. one of the things that people bring up all the time is Mad Scientist being eliminated because it was involved in next Ramus adventure, making Freeze Mage significantly worse when you have to draw the secrets and play it from hand. So uh, do you think Force is bringing Freeze Mage at all? It's possible. Uh, Freeze Mage was still a deck in Classic. It was a very dominant deck, in fact. And one of the main tools against Freeze Mage is also out, which is Lotheb. So I, th I think there will still be some room to play Freeze Mage. But, um, yeah, I don't, it doesn't look I, don't like it. I don't think it'll be as good as, as it once was. Wow. Whoa. Uh, Forsen has a super aggressive hand. He's going to hold on to the, the coin here so that he can play Knife Juggler, Coin, Mirror Image. But that conveniently allows Killer to armor up and then bash the, the Knife Juggler through the mirror, uh, the taunts. He could just play the knife juggler and, and nothing, and then do knife juggler, mirror image, mirror image, oh, the juggles. <laughs> Muster for mirrors. God, these, they just like keep doing juggles all across the board with the zero two. These are very frustrating to deal with, though, in all seriousness. 
Oh, Bran. Well, that synergizes real well with uh, Hungry Dragon. Hungry Dragon. Twice as many potential zombie chows. <laughs> it's that one time when you need a head ten. life. Yeah, exactly. Oh. I imagine that Kilber's just gonna immediately remove that second juggler. Two jugglers, two bashes. Orson obviously gonna be pretty upset with that, but he's got spell slinger for the immediate recovery. Wave Heal in wave. Oh, if, oh the opposite, if the opposite was true, that would have been ridiculous. Yeah, Wind Fury behind four taunts. <laughs> you know what he's gonna... Oh, he can't get Unstable Portal, can he? So, I was thinking about ways to use his Healing Wave effectively. I mean, realistically, there might be a big minion that he has, which Healing Wave could be useful, but he's gonna definitely need some more help off of some of the draws. We see BGH in Killer's Warrior deck, and I think out of all the decks, this is probably the most appropriate, as he has the double Cruel Task, which can push five attack minions into range. Oh, I like that. Good observation, Crip. Um, because Cruel Taskmaster, with so many dru druid stuff being at five attack, like, you know, the Ancient of Lords, the uh, Archmage, not the Archmage, the, uh, the Thorson, Definitely opportunities to use Big Game Hunter versus if you're playing a bunch of aggro decks all the time, you might not have the opportunity to. That's a really good card against uh, Warrior as well, having the Water Elemental. Well, I think he'd also be like if you're playing this type of a deck, you would be playing Flame Waker. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty decent hand for all of that. Really trying to get as much mileage as he can out of like the mirror images. Doesn't want to give it up for essentially nothing. Let your opponent pick it up. I mean, was there any doubt? Second hungry dragon. You know what I want to see, Crip? I want to see some opportunity for like Gromosh to be Wind Fury and just hit for twenty. I don't think we'll actually get to that point. Realistically, he might even Wind Fury now and just clear the taunts, but okay. that would have been awesome as a surprise finisher. <laughs> uh, Good stuff. There's Arcane Blast. Oh, um, not bad. Board clear. Yeah, Water Elemental's good here. You can clear the board. And then you have uh, Water Elemental behind Taunt, which is perfect. Yeah, and Kilter does have access to a weapon, but he can't uh, activate the Execute onto the Water Elemental just yet. Now oh, he can. he can. Wow, what a good draw once again from Kibler. Yeah, he absolutely Do you want to use it though? You, th you think he should use it? I don't think I he has to. He, he doesn't have to, you're right, because he's not under immediate threat. Oh, there. But, uh, you know, he has two executes, and the cool Taskmaster is also board presence too, so I, I think this is pretty good. Plus, the cool Taskmaster is like good, so that way you can potentially answer the next one drop of Hungry Dragon number two coming out, so I, I think I think it's it's appropriate. I don't like the fireball here. Even though it's a good target, I think it's also a good opportunity to play the conjurer. You're really not going to get anything much better than that. Wow, discover a secret. Counter spell is It's not as good as you think against warrior uh, because they have so many cheap spells for removal like slam, bash, execute. It's not going to stop like the flame strike levels of relevance. Whoa! Oh, that is a draw. Blackwing Corruptor on a six. Battle try to deal with your opponent's last turn. That's what you want every oh, turn. Oh my goodness. And uh, Forsen is continuing to lose more board. Uh, and Warrior's going to be the one putting pressure on. So let's, I mean, he's going to need some help here because he's got two fireballs, but nowhere near the lethal range that he's expecting to be at turn nine. Wow, I'm surprised to see that. I feel like... Um... I feel like the Frostbolt Fireball worked out pretty well. I guess he could still do that and leave it at one. But it looks like instead he'll probably play the secret. Okay. I don't love it, but okay. <laughs> I mean, he had 21 damage of burn, but still can't really direct it. Uh, something to worry about is Mirror Entity, so... Kibler might play Big Game Hunter first. Uh, to, to, to trigger potential Mirror Entity, and then if it's Mirror Entity, you can kill with the Fiery War Axe, and if it's not, you can just play Hungry Dragon, and then address the one drop afterwards. So it's important to note choices. that whenever you see a secret play that was manufactured by a different card, 
uh, or created from the card, you can you can see that it will say that it was created by a specific card. So mm -hmm. when you see the secret being played, you can see that's created by the Ethereal Conjurer. So you know the distribution on secrets is the full spectrum. It's not uh, the expected secret in the deck. Okay, that's that's a good observation to make as well. Um, it looks like Kibler just wants to be more aggressive onto the board. He could have executed if it was a mirror entity anyways. Now, uh, Forsen is completely forced to play defensive here. Oh, that's a good Flame Waker. Yeah, but it could be a really bad Flame Waker. He's gambling. Oh, oh. he did it. That was, was a really good Flame Waker. Oh, Nixia! Oh my God, Nixia! Brian Kilbra, welcome to the show. This is exactly what he wanted to see, like, obscure dragons being played. That is one happy camper. We haven't seen a Nixia since the days of Druid experiment. That counterspell is oh, huge. Because now he's got he's got all these spells that he can actually clear the board with. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, the fireball. If this was able to kill off a Nixia with all these arcane missiles, which is a perfect draw here. And I mean, he can also heal the um, the Flame Waker back into uh, uh, it, it, get some more procs here, and then use the hero power to clean up. Sure. I mean, this could be a force and comeback. Wow, loses the joust, never lucky. <laughs> of course, uh, healing a, a Flame Waker is completely unnecessary for 14. Man, return of the Flame Waker, look at that. Wow. Well, let's see if Killer can pick up yet another dragon. Is it like Chromagus time or something? Uh oh, I'm, I don't have a good feeling about this. It's the <laughs> boar again! He's got the board control, but it doesn't really matter because the Cool Taskmaster comes out. And again, that healing wave, making sure that the Flame Waker doesn't get picked off by the Cool Taskmaster. Here's where we have a really big never lucky opportunity what? here. Here we go, here we go! Wow, Shadow Flame! Never lucky! What is going on? Another boar? It's just this game is not boring at all, Crip. Alright. Yeah. That just happened. Well, it looks like uh, Forsen's out of steam with a mage, though. I think this Shadow Flame is uh, the start of the end. Oh, never mind. Crush, Crush kind of sucks. <laughs> Yeah, it's just funny because it's. I don't usually expect something like Crush. Uh, yeah. That's why it might be the perfect answer to like an Antonitis on the board. Oh. Maybe. I mean, at this stage, uh, are you going to just pass because you're comfortable with so. like, your opponent developing? Yeah, you're, you're taking three a turn. Oh, another card for Big Game Hunter to Shadow Flame. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> So quick, you bug the spectator mode. Uh oh, well, we're gonna have to flip the here. All right. Well, let's see what's. Uh, maybe we can see in, in the in the graveyard section uh, what's gonna end up uh, being lost. Oh, yeah, no. certainly uh, the shadow flame on the big game hunter is gonna come down. Kibber not even developing the Alex Straza's champion. Uh, I guess he's just going to keep it and play really defensive, but the board most likely is clear from this point. And, like, without Dr. Boom, what your only you late game that I can think of is do? probably, like, Ronin or Antonitis. Maybe you have both in the deck, though. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. It's clear that uh, the game plan here for Mage is to find some way to burn, but it's like he used both Fireballs, both Frostbolts, and Kibber looks like he's finally developing some of his board minions. Mm. So... It's kind of it's kind of a shame because like right now it's like the most exciting part it's the top deck wars after there's a bunch of uh, slugging back and forth, but from here I, I can a definitely second. say it's a strong advantage. Crush is a GVG card. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, yeah, you gotta type that in. You, you never know for sure, right? Like Crush, where is that from? Crush is from Goblins versus Gnomes. Whoa, uh -oh. this is awkward, Crip. Looks like uh, looks like Forsen might have a chance in this game after all. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would almost up uh, his his win percentage to a hundred, but I'm not sure against this deck because uh, I'm pretty sure Kibler didn't get that off Spell Slinger, right? 
No, got he got the Shadow, Shadow Flame, Flame off Spellslinger. Yeah, the the crush was uh, was just in the deck there, and yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'm not sure what what what'll be the resolution here. I think we'll maybe hear from the admins pretty soon, but uh, that match is on hold for now. We had a few technical difficulties that uh, you know we'll try to fix here in just a moment. But um, in the meantime, as we mentioned, that the the loser round was not going to be streamed just for the sake of time and flow. Um, so the, the loser round from uh, the A match and the B match was uh, Archon Amnesiac versus uh, Tempestorm Eloise. And um, the results of that are in. Uh, it is it is a 3-0, I believe, uh, against Eloise. So Amnesiac will go to the decider match, and Eloise is the first player to exit the, the tournament. My work is Ooh, not very. It never feels good to go zero six, uh, as any player, as any team. So Ellie's definitely probably punished a little bit for her deck choices, but well, we'll, we'll probably find out more information about how everything pans out. But in the meantime, a great rebound win for Amnesiac because he really was looking for an opportunity to redeem himself after being so close to being Tice. Uh, we rejoined the the game here, as looks like Crip. The Water Elemental is keeping that King's Defender completely in check. Another card that Killer seems to have agreed with Eloise on uh, as a card. And now it looks like the Mage is out carding the Warrior. Mm -hmm. But it's only got removal stuff. I have to say that I think I think from what we've seen out of these Warrior decks that the Arathi Weaponsmith is, um, is my preferred choice. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I think for what Warrior needs to do, like, just more removal stuff and tempo onto the board is pretty powerful for Dragon decks in general. And you never know, man, that, like, two damage weapon might be, like, the stopgap in between the Blackwing Corruptor of being completely effective, uh, having Bash be, like, a perfect piece of removal with stuff. Because right now, I mean, Kibler's actually fallen really far behind. That Water Elemental's keeping everything in place. I was ready to call Kibler the champion because his quality of draws would be much better. But once no, again... That's a big card. Picking up Ethereal Conjurer. I like the Mirror Entity actually a lot. Because when, when you're going top deck mode, you haven't even seen that many big minions um, from Warrior. At least from what we've seen. I mean, it, it, it could have been maybe a, one played in between. Um... There's a good chance. Oh no! No, looks like the uh, the spectator mode has to uh, <laughs> cooperate. Uh, Twilight Guardian just gonna summon another minion on the other side, uh, and the the board is building ever more. You know, Killer's gonna have to look for brawl at this point because one thing that these very slow defensive warrior decks don't have is card draw. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, but Forsen's almost out of cards. Realistically, he could end up uh, just running out of threats if Kilbert can find a way to remove the board and one... Sure, so one card remains. Almost out of cards. Is it Brawl? Oh, two cards. Oh. Wow. So, 6, 10, 12, 13 damage. Uh, I think... I think oh. Fortune used almost all of his burn. That's, that's one extra damage, so 6, 10... 13, 14 damage, putting Kibler at 3 health. Unless he wants to ping and remove the board, so... Looks like he is going to go for the removal on the board, uh, just in case the last card is Brawl. Alright, Kibler, what you got? Your last card. Is the last card Brawl? Oh, 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 that's a good last card, Sarah. but it's too slow in this case. We see all 30 cards, uh, and... It uh, looks like we finally got also a ruling here, you know, one of the things that we were worried about is whether or not uh, Kilbert gets disqualified directly, but uh, looks like the ruling is uh, Forsen's match is already being played here, so it'll be up to Forsen's discretion if he lets Kibler change the Crush card this series, because Kibler still has to play that Warrior deck again, and they immediately queue up, so... Uh, Honestly, I think I just let him have the crush, right? Because <laughs> if, if, if you let him change a card, you can kind of get countered a little bit. Because um, be, being able to, to change a card after after the series has started gives you a bit of an edge. Um, yeah, plus crush, it's I don't a tricky think one. that great of a card uh, no. to include. So I, I, I almost think that it's like a good handicap. 
Uh, or or maybe put it, I don't know, like because I think you'd even sometimes rather have like a pretty bad card to play early on because Crush could be seven mana sometimes, and you'd rather have like target dummy. Well, I don't know. also with with Forsen taking that win, he has a shaman. I think he'd love a crush on the other end. Yeah, <laughs> seven mana I, remove I, I a one it. drop, right? The more I think about it, the more I'm willing to take it on the person's <laughs> side. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see. You know, maybe I'm sure. I'm sure with so many things up in the air and uh, so much, um, so much of of this new deck and new card structure that there are a lot of angles that we can't uh, can't realize from from the point that we stand. Uh, so you know, I'm sure there's a bit more to it. And uh, at the same time, I wouldn't be too surprised to see uh, if the call was made to ask him to change the card out. But I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, gotcha. Forsen well, does take the win, though, so it didn't really matter that Kibler had the crush in that game. Uh, Forsen still has to win with Shaman. Kibler has his own Shaman. And Kibler has this warrior that um, has not worked out for really anybody. It was the, uh, it was, man, I was really expecting Anixia to potentially swing the board, but that Flame Waker being able to turn yeah. it around was just the difference maker because he would have closed it out with two hits to the face with uh, the Anixia. Would have been a completely different scenario. Uh, it would have put us also, honestly in an awkward spot because then it's like, ah, he played Crush because he deserved to actually get that win. Forsen chose to let Kibler keep the Crush. Yeah. Well. Good call. Forrestan understands exactly what Crush is <laughs> and exactly what his deck does. The biggest thing you'll crush is this Unbound oh, Elemental. Uh, yeah. Most likely on turn 7, unless you somehow let Armor Smith survive. So, yeah. that, that, that'll, that'll probably be the case here. Leave it, or leave it to Kibler to use a card he shouldn't use, and then it's not even good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty funny stuff. Uh, pretty decent draw for both players here, getting early curves, and I think if it comes down to it, would you rather be the warrior or the shaman that has good draw on the curve here? Uh, I think it's more important for the warrior. Um, because the warrior has all the answers, it's just unlikely that you line them up in sequence. Like, the warrior has the better answers, but shaman is more of a consistent opener. Yeah, I it think looks that like the shaman actually... has the better hand though. Well, oh, I, there's. I, I like the shaman here. Uh, I mean, it, it has a lot more explosive potential uh, to follow up on the unbound elemental growing with like the an uh, ancestral knowledge card. So I, I, I kind of like that because like one of the things that you're worried about is if warrior removes enough to the point where you you don't really have many cards and you're left top decking. So cards like Ancestral Knowledge are super clutch in those scenarios. I think I would have liked to see the attack there because it, like you, you have nothing in your hand to actually deal with this the next turn, so why not? Okay, apparently you just draw that. Yeah, that perfect. Yeah, okay. I'll just be quiet now. <laughs> Well, you know, some, I mean, that's always the thing, right? There's a, there's a common joke within, uh, I think, the Asian scene. Like, I think the Chinese community, that's always like, one of the myths that every player believes in is that you'll top deck the right answer the next time. Because it's mm -hmm. like, you, you always like fall for it. Oh, I'll just try to Oh, no, deck. he has it. Oh, no, he, he doesn't have it. Because they lost the one attack. Oh, very interesting. Oh, right, right. The battle cry is also game plus one attack. Mm -hmm. It's not like I thought, a, I thought he like could a, kill a, it with the... Clock. Yeah, I thought he could kill it with the um, uh, Black and Corruptor, but that's not the case. Yeah, because that's it's important to know that's a battle cry and not like a transform. Um, oh, like perfect fluid. card! Perfect really card! Good. That overload puts the Undead Elemental to 6 attack. Not only does it one-shot the 3-6 taunt Twilight Drake, but it keeps it out of range of the 2-1 Twilight Drake in play. That's okay. The uh, Blackman Corruptor still snipes it. So, in the end, you know, as long as you can stabilize. But the, here's the hard thing: Forsen doesn't have an opportunity to develop Doomhammer this turn, so it's one turn slower. But uh, let, let's see if he ends up going for. Okay, he's going for Feral Spirits. I was looking immediately at Flame Juggler and Lepernome as well, but I mean, Flames Feral Spirits is a little bit more stats on the board. Plus, you can still play Doomhammer the following turn. Okay. Yeah. All right. What do we have here? We have Alistair's champion, which is amazing. Um, you can give it a bonus attack, but it's probably not worth it. I think I'd just go with the two dragon synergy cards here. 
the champion and the uh, black technician. Okay. Maybe. Black wing technician. And Hungry Dragon's a little bit better stats, but I'm always just so afraid of the pit snake, or even more fearsome than the pit snake crypt, the stone tusk boar. You never know. Well, it would have been pretty do. decent, actually, there. Oh, that's a bad draw. Pretty luxurious at this point. You don't really need it unless his opponent had Harrison Jones. Mm -hmm. I think with Doomhammer, you do want to trade a little bit here, though. The, the Voidwalker is actually a terrific, um, terrific card to get off the Hungry Dragon. It kills the 2-1, stays alive, blocks the 5 damage. Uh, you can put every other minion on the board. Um, right now, it looks like he's going to have to be playing Bran and the, the Corruptor. Which is pretty weak. Um, I think I like the Azure Drake. But with Bran. I think I would play the Azure Drake with Bran. I think he wants to think of a weapon or some kind of removal. Execute, slam. Not Ysera. No. No, that Ysera has come up in very, uh, very poor times so far. Alright, well, how does this look here? Um, he's, he's really close. Oh! oh! That's it! That's it! GG. Forcing close out the series three to one, and the Dragon Warrior once again crit one and seven. One and seven. Looks like Crush did not push it over the edge. <laughs> not good enough. Uh, I was going with the oh BM jug. Cards we oh, will be missing. BM wow, so lucky. Oh my god. Ah, uh, I, I would have loved it if Fortune just ended it right there with the flame juggler to the face, just to kind of show him, like, yeah, I had him out exactly to kill you. That's going to wrap up uh, the series, guys. So Fortune moves on into the winner's bracket. Let me pull it up over here. To face the winner of Strife Crow from Cloud9 versus Orange from Team Archon. That's going to be our next series. Uh, and then we'll be about halfway through the day. I want to also give a big shout out to uh, Geekfield for supporting the event. Uh, check out all their stuff. Over $50 of cool swag every time you're able to get some of that stuff. Uh, so make sure to check them out. And then also thank you to Curse for helping us put on the event uh, for this big online tournament. 30k prize pool to be exact. Uh, when we come back, once again, Strife Co. versus Orange. And then we'll be moving on to the winners and losers bracket. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.